Egyptian and American archaeologists have unearthed what could be the oldest known beer factory at one of the most prominent archaeological sites of ancient Egypt. According to a top antiquities official, Mustafa Waziri, Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, said the factory was found in Abydos, an ancient brewal ground located in the desert west of the Nile River, over 450 kilometers south of Cairo. He said the factory apparently dates back to the region of King Narmer, who is widely known for his unification of ancient Egypt at the beginning of the first dynastic period. Archaeologists found eight huge units, each is 20 meters long and two and a half meters wide. Each unit includes some 40 pottery basins in two rows, which had been used to heat up a mixture of grains and water to produce beer, Wazir said. The joint mission is co-chaired by Dr. Matthew Adams of the Institute of Fine Arts. New York University and Deborah Vishak, Assistant Professor of Ancient Egyptian Art, History and Archaeology at Princeton University. Adam said the factory was apparently built in this area to provide royal rituals with beer, given that archaeologists found evidences showing the use of beer in sacrificial rites of ancient Egypt. British archaeologists were the first to mention the existence of that factory early in the 18th century, but they couldn't determine its location, the Antiquities Ministry said. With its vast cemeteries and temples from the earliest time of ancient Egypt, Abydos was known for monumentous honoring Osiris, ancient Egyptian god of underworld, and the deity responsibility for judging souls in the afterlife. The necropolis had been used in every period of early Egyptian history, from the prehistoric age to Roman times. Egyptian archaeologists accidentally discover 250 ancient rock-cut tombs. Some of the burials found at El Hamidiyya necropolis, dating back to 4,200 years. An archaeological survey crew accidentally discovered some 250 rock-cut tombs at El Hamidiyya Necropolis near Suhaj, Egypt. The graves range in age from the end of the Old Kingdom around 2200 BC to the end of the Batlamic period in 30 BC. According to Nervin El Arif of Ahram Online, several styles of tombs and burial wells are curved into different levels of mountain face at the site, say Mustafa Waziri, Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities. In a statement from the Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, the necropolis is located in southern Egypt on the west bank of Nile River. One of the burials includes a sloping tomb with a false door and a hallway leading to a gallery with a shaft. The door is inscribed 
with hieroglyphs. The besetting the resident of the tomb slaughtering sacrifices, while mourners make offering to the deities. Given their small size compared with the tombs reserved for royalty, which are of large sizes, these tombs may have been allocated to the common people. Historian Basim Ishama told Ahmad Guma of Al Monitor. This provides more details about the daily life of ordinary people at the time. Archaeologists conducting excavation work at the necropolis discovered numerous pottery shared and intact boots. Some of the pieces were used in daily life. The team also found remnants of a round metal mirror, human and animal bones, small alabaster boots dated to Egypt slate period, and pieces of limestone funerary plates dated to the 6th dynasty. Badi and his colleagues expect to find more rock cut tombs at the site as excavation continues bears the statement they have already documented more than 300 tombs in the area which was centrally located near the ancient cities of, Was uh, of Aswan and Abido. Use of the burial site spans more than 2000 years beginning in the old Kilgitan period which included Pharaoh Khufu, builder of the Great Pyramid of Giza the last interments likely occurred around the time of Cleopatra's death, which marked the end of the Ptolemaic dynasty. The El Hamidiya necropolis is believed to have been the final resting place for leaders and officials of the city of Al Hamim, one of the most important administrative centers in ancient Egypt. Reporters J.C. Holtz for ART News Achmim was home for the cult of men, a god of fertility and sexuality who was also associated with the desert, according to Ancient Egypt Online. Findings made at the site may pave the way for future discoveries at oft overlooked archaeological sites. Badi tells Al Monitor. Egypt has many antiquity sites, but light must be shed on other unknown areas, he added. Excavation should not be limited to famous archaeological areas such as Saqqara or Luxor. Zahi Hawass announces discovery of lost golden city in Luxor. The Egyptian mission under Dr. Zahi Hawass found the city that was lost under the sands and called the Rise of Aten. The city is 3,000 years old, dates to the reign of Amenhotep III, and continued to be used by Tut Amh Amun and I. Many foreign missions searched for this city and never found it. We began our work searching for the mortuary temple of Tut and Hamun because the temples of Pos, Hor Moheb, and I were found in this area, Hawass said. The Egyptian expedition was surprised to discover the largest city ever found in Egypt. Founded by one of the greatest rulers of Egypt, King Amenhotep III, the ninth king of the 18th dynasty, who ruled Egypt from 1391 till 1353 BC. This city was active during the great king's co-regency with his son, the famous Amenhotep IV, Echnaton. It was the largest administrative and industrial settlement in the era of the Egyptian Empire, 
on the western bank of Luxor. The city's streets are flanked by houses, which some of their walls are up to three meters high. Hawass continued, We can reveal that the city extends to the west, all the way to the famous Deir el Medina. Bestie Bryan, professor of Egyptology at John Hopkins University in Baltimore, USA, said, The discovery of the lost city is the second most important archaeological discovery since the tomb of Tut and Hamun. The discovery of the lost city not only will give us a rare glimpse into the life of the ancient Egyptians at the time where the empire was at his wealthiest, but will help us shed light on one of the history's greatest mystery. Why did Echnaton and Nefertiti decide to move to Amarna? Brian's edit. The excavation area is sandwiched between Ramses III Temple at Medina Habu and Amenhotep III's Temple at Memnon. The Egyptian mission started working in this area in search of Tut Amun's Mortri Temple. Tut Amun's successors, King I, built his temple on a site which was later adjoined on its southern side by Ramses III's temple at Medina Habu. Egyptologists believe I's temple may formerly have belonged to Tut and Hamun as two colossal statues of the young king were found there. The northern part of the temple is still under the sands. The excavation started in September 2020 and within weeks to the team's greatest surprise, formations and the mud bricks began to appear in all directions. What they unearthed was the site of a large city in good condition of preservation, with almost complete walls and with rooms filled with tools of daily life. The archaeological layers have laid untouched for thousands of years left by the ancient residents as if it was yesterday. The first goal of the mission was to date this settlement. Hieroglyphic inscriptions found on clay caps of wine vessels. Historical references tell us the settlement consisted of three royal palaces of King Amunhotep III as well as the Empire's Administrative and Industrial Center. A large number of archaeological finds such as rings, scraps, colored pottery vessels, and mud bricks bearing seals of King Amunhotep III's car touch confirmed the dating of the city. After only seven months of the excavation, Several area or neighborhoods have been uncovered. In the southern part, the mission found a bakery, a cooking, and a food preparation area, complete with ovens and storage pottery. From its size, we can state the kitchen was catering a very large number of workers and employees. The other area is fenced in by a zigzag wall with only one access point leading to internal corridors and residential areas. The single entrance makes us think it was some sort of security with the ability to control entry and exit to enclosed areas. Zigzag walls are one of the rare architecture elements in ancient Egyptian architecture, mainly used towards the end of the 18th dynasty. The third area is the workshop. On one side, the production area 
for the mud bricks used to build temples. All over the excavated areas, the mission has found many tools used in some sort of industrial activity like spinning and weaving. Metal and glass making slag has also been unearthed, but the main area of such activity has yet to be discovered. Two unusual burials of a cow or bull were found inside one of the rooms. Investigations are underway to determine the nature and purpose of this practice. And even more remarkable burial of a person found with arms outstretched to his side and remains of a robe wrapped around his knees. The location and position of this skeleton are rather odd and more investigations are in progress. One of the most recent finds of a vessel containing two gallons of dried or boiled meat, about 10 kg, has a valuable inscription, year 37, dressed meat for the third Hepset festival from the slaughterhouse of the stockyard of Ka made by the butcher Louis. This valuable information not only gave us the names of two people that lived and worked in the city, but confirmed that the city was active and the time of King Amunhotep III co-regency with his son Ikhnaton. As history goes, one year after this spot was made, the city was abandoned and the capital relocated to Amarna. But was it and why? And was the city repopulated again when Tut and Hamun returned to Thebes? Only further excavation of the area will reveal what truly happened 3,500 years ago. So far, the mission has discovered a group of rock-cut tombs of different sizes that can be reached through stairs carved into a rock. A common feature of a tomb construction in the Valley of the Kings and in the Valley of the Nobles. Work is underway and the mission expects to uncover untouched tombs filled with treasures. In order to see more videos about ancient Egypt and all the new discoveries, please support us with like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.